I went to Portland, Oregon, a city known for its vibrant food scene, to get a taste of the savory, comforting Thai version of chicken and rice. And there was no better place to go than Nong's Khao Mang Gai. I met with owner Nan Pansu Kwatana, who has perfected the dish. Tell me where you're from originally. I'm from Bangkok, Thailand. And what brought you to the, to the States and to Portland in particular? To Portland for love. <laughs> It didn't work out, so I decided to stay and build my life from, from the ground up. After working in restaurants for a few years, Nang opened up her own food cart. Food cart wasn't my first choice. My first choice was restaurant. <laughs> but I have uh, $8,000 saved up. It's not enough to open a restaurant. For me, at the time, it was one shot. <laughs> I gave it all on the table, all my saving. I don't have a fallback plan but I was determined. She didn't always dream of being a cook, but she took what she learned from her mother and used it to build a life for herself here in America. We didn't have a lot of money, so we had to uh, cook our own food. I didn't think it's anything special, but uh, I cook for friends sometimes, and they, they say, oh, your food very good. So I, I gave it a shot in uh, 2009 um, to uh, open a food cart. And when it came to the menu, she decided to focus on the one thing she could make really well all by herself, Khao Man Gai. When was the first time you recall eating Khao Man Gai in Thailand? My uh, boyfriend at the time took me to this, um, his favorite uh, Khao Man Gai shop. It was a one-man show. I thought that like, oh, uh, I can do that. Uh, he did by himself, I, I can do it too. Uh, I think what I learned that is it's harder than it looks. Nong's food cart became so popular that she eventually opened up a brick and mortar restaurant. People ask me, oh, you success, what's next? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, I'm happy here. I came from nothing. I'm an immigrant. I have this, my own business, this little food cart on the street. This is happy for me. I don't want what's next. But you have to be willing to take that risk. High risk, high reward. <laughs> Today, she's got two restaurants in Portland with more items on the menu, and her signature sauce is sold in stores throughout the Pacific Northwest and online. So tell me about some of the ingredients that go into the sauce. Fermented soybean, lots of ginger, pickled garlic, Thai chilies, vinegar, soy sauce, some syrup that we make in-house. Thai food is for flavor. It is um, a flavor bomb in your mouth and it's balanced with the chicken and the rice together, and then uh, has the broth to kind of tie everything together. But Nong still doesn't see herself as a cook. She sees herself first as an entrepreneur and a leader. The most important of all is the people that make Khao Mang Gai. And it become Khao Mang Gai, chicken and rice for better life, better life for customer, I offer a unique choice, a healthy food, and better life for the people that are making it. Chicken and rice for better life, I love that. That's our mission, yes. Look who's here with me, it's Brian. Now, Brian, that restaurant, Nong's restaurant that you visited in Portland, it's really all about that dish, Khao Mang Gai. Yep, it's called Nong's Khao Mang Gai for a reason. We went there, talked to Nong, and came back really inspired to make our own version of Khao Mang Gai. Okay. And I'm happy to report that it's as easy to make in the home kitchen as it is in the restaurant kitchen. Perfect. We're gonna begin by poaching our chicken in a very well-seasoned bath. Okay. So I have a four-pound chicken here and 12 cups of water there. But before we drop the chicken in this little bath, we're gonna season up that liquid pretty well. We're gonna add one two inch piece of ginger that we're gonna peel quickly. You could use a spoon if you want to, if you're one of those folks. You could actually use something called a vegetable peeler. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna slice this ginger into quarter inch coins. Now we wanna make sure this broth is really well seasoned because it's going to double as a little soup for us and we're also gonna cook our rice in it. Great. And we have six garlic cloves here. We're gonna smash and peel these. Peel our garlic and drop it in. Our garlic is in there. We're also going to add two tablespoons of table salt. 
Now we can slide our chicken in, nice and gentle-like. <laughs> so we're putting it in so the breast is up top and the thighs and dark meat are down underneath the surface of the water. That's because we want the breast to poach a little bit more gently than the thighs and the dark meat. So we'll bring this up to a boil over high heat, come back, put a lid on it, and let it simmer. Sounds good. So our chicken has come up to a boil. We're going to reduce the heat to low. Then we're going to cover it with a little bit of aluminum foil, and that's going to really help trap the heat as it simmers. Okay. We're going to let this chicken simmer until it hits 160 degrees in the breast and about 175 or more in the legs and thighs, anywhere between 25 and 35 minutes. Sounds good. Okay, Bridget, it's been about 30 minutes. We could take a look at our chicken. Oh, it smells wonderful. Huh? It smells great. So we want to just temp it and make sure it's at least 160 in the breast. So 161. Now we could shut the heat off here, and we're going to transfer our chicken to a bowl to rest. Just lift it out with this carving fork. A little drainage going on there. <laughs> and we'll put it in the bowl to rest. We're just going to cover it with our aluminum foil while we prepare the rest of the meal. Even after a good 30 minutes or so, that chicken's still going to be plenty hot. Before we push our stock to the side, we've created this wonderful, flavorful broth here. We're going to reserve three cups of it for cooking our rice. So we can set our three cups down there. And now we can just cover our broth and set it aside. At the end of the meal, we're going to have this as a little side soup. Gorgeous. Kind of so next we could cook our rice. We have two cups of jasmine rice here. And jasmine rice is typical for this dish. We've gone ahead and rinsed it and drained it. Rinsing is important because it removes a lot of the excess starch on the surface of the rice and helps it cook up nice and light and fluffy. All right. We are going to heat up a tablespoon of vegetable oil here in our saucepan. To that, we're going to mimic some of the flavors we added to the broth. One of the new ones we're adding, though, is shallot. We have one minced shallot here, one two-inch piece of ginger that we've just cut in half. We have two minced garlic cloves and a quarter teaspoon of salt. We're just going to let that cook, not to give it any color, but just to really let it perfume the oil. All right. Okay, it's been about two minutes, and that smells wonderful, doesn't it? I know that rice is going to taste so great because it smells great already. We're going to add our rinsed and drained rice. We're going to let that cook for just a couple minutes to coat the grains with a little bit of oil. Again, this is to help them stay fluffy as they cook. You'll smell the rice begin to get a little toasty, and some of the edges of the grains will begin a little bit translucent. All right, it's been about two minutes, and now we can add our three cups of broth. We're using a ratio of one part rice to one and a half parts liquid. We are now simmering. We're going to reduce the heat to low, and we're going to put a lid on our rice. And a lot of people get hung up on the proper way to cook rice, so here's the tip. You're going to let it go for 20 minutes on low with the lid on. Don't remove the lid. Don't look at the pot. Don't think about the pot. What pot? Exactly. Okay, so 20 minutes simmered on low with the lid on. Then after that 20 minutes, shut off the heat, and guess what? Don't touch the lid. Let don't. it go for another 10 minutes. So I, first I don't touch, don't think about it, don't look at it, and then I continue to not even acknowledge it. It's pretty simple. So while the rice is cooking, we're going to work on our sauce for the common guy. All right. So this sauce is really stands in stark contrast to the rest of the dish, which is a little bit subtle and gentle. The sauce is very powerful. and It really pairs well with the, with the Great. dish. Great. So we're going to start off with a quarter cup of Thai soybean paste, and that's made from fermented soybeans, and it adds a ton of umami to the sauce, so it's really, really savory. Really nice. We're going to add to that a quarter cup of distilled vinegar, a quarter cup of soy sauce, two tablespoons of sugar, three minced garlic cloves, two minced Thai chilies. Obviously, if you like spicy, you could add a little bit more Thai chili if you like, and a teaspoon of grated fresh ginger. Nice. And we're just going to whisk this together. We're really just trying to whisk until we dissolve the sugar, about a minute or so. Okay. That's so it. Our sauce is all set. We can wait for our rice to finish cooking. What rice? Exactly. Okay, Bridget, it has been 30 minutes, and we're ready to take a look at that which shall not be named. Where did that come from? <laughs> so I like to use this carving fork as a way to fluff the rice. You can see it's nice and light and perfectly cooked. This recipe was brought to you by <laughs> the Carving Fork Association of America. If you're not carving, you're not living. That's true. All right, so the rice is good. We're going to turn our soup back on just to warm up. Okay. And for our garnish for our soup, we're going to slice up some scallions, shave off the root end, and just barely shave the root end off. I see people like cutting all the way up here. Whew, that gets, gets me all worked up. Peel off the exterior layer there that pops off. 
and then trim away any soft green parts up the top. Sometimes they can be a little bit sandy. Sometimes you give them a rinse under some water. These look pretty clean. That's just character. <laughs> That's just true grit right there. All right, and we're just gonna give them a quick slice. So white, light green, and we're moving into dark green territory. Yeah, I, I celebrate the entire scallion. I like that. Okay, so our scallions are All good. Right. We're ready to carve our chicken. That's been hanging out for 30 minutes. Not much of a looker, but it does taste really good. It, no, I, I see a chicken that looks like that. I know it's going to taste good. Yeah. Good, simple poached actually, chicken. Gorgeous. It's one of my favorite ways to prepare chicken, actually. All right, so we'll drain off any of this excess liquid here. We have a little bit of broth left over here in the bowl. We could just add that to our other broth. I was going to drink it, but that's OK. You're going to drink plenty of this later. So we're going to remove the dark meat and shred all the dark meat, and then we're going to slice the, the breast meat. OK. okay. Two so, different textures. Right. So using our carving fork <gasps> once again. There we go. We could just separate these leg quarters. Mmm, juicy, juicy. This thing basically will fall apart on its own. We'll take these wingies and get rid of the wing tips. We could save the flats here. And I like to carve off the drumettes. Lovely. And then we could just remove the breast meat by cutting on either side of that center keel bone. Okay. All right, now we're going to shred all the dark meat. Why don't you grab a couple of forks okay. there? Big chunks, little chunks. I like bite-sized pieces. How's that? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, while you continue to shred all the dark meat and stuff with the bones in it, I'm going to remove the skin from the breast here, and I'm just going to slice these. So we're offering up two textures of chicken here. We have the shredded dark meat and then the wonderfully sliced breast right here. And we'll just continue to do this until we've taken care of all of our chicken meat. Sounds great. All right, Bridget, our chicken is shredded, our soup is hot, our rice is fluffed. I think we're ready to eat. I, I would say so. <laughs> I'm going to start off by portioning you some soup. Lovely. Some scallions in there. That's for you. Oh, Roma's hit me. And now we're going to make this a little restaurant-y, and we're going to portion your rice out in a little nifty little molded bowl. It's just to make it extra fancy for us. The shredded chicken on top. And then a few pieces of sliced chicken. Mm-hmm. A little bit of the light and the dark meat. And typical garnish, a little bit of cucumber and some cilantro. I don't have to tip you, do I? You know, it's, it's not required, but it's appreciated. All right. And a little bit of the sauce here, just right over top. Mmm. So you want to eat the, the cucumber and the cilantro as like a little fresh reprieve there in the middle of your meal. It already looks stunning. So well, it's because we molded the rice. Well, yes. It's a, it's a big thing. It all comes, what rice? <laughs> all right, I'm just following your direction here. Mm. That's so good, right? That was absolutely my new favorite chicken and rice dish. I just want to get a little bite of the, the rice on its own. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's bright, just a really light flavor. Yeah, and then the sauce makes it pop, right? Yes, it does. Chicken is incredibly moist, very succulent. And that's even the breast meat. Mm. All right, soup. Mm. So good, right? If all that came out was just this broth, yeah. it would be worth it. This is spectacular, just sends it over the edge. And it was really simple to make. And I love that you used the broth was the backbone. Created the broth with the chicken, the broth flavored the rice, you served the broth at the end. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And if you would like to make this incredible dish, poach the chicken to create a flavorful broth. Cook the rice, but don't look at it. Use plenty of garnishes like sauce and cukes and herbs for that cow mangai experience. So from Cook's Country, what might be the pinnacle of all chicken and rice dishes? Cow mangai. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>